It's moved across this century. She is uh, one of the people who is responsible for a, a train of thought that we'll get into in just a moment with one of the people who has uh, inherited, I guess, her intellectual mantle, Leonard Peikoff. Uh, Dr. Peikoff has been a philosophy pr instructor and professor. He is now writing primarily. His book is The Ominous Parallels, The End of Freedom in America. And Dr. Peikoff, it's a pleasure to have you. Welcome to Midday. Thank you for having me. Philosophy is, of course, one of those things that we look at in history after we figure out the wars and all that and uh, the deaths of the leaders and so forth. And we realize that the, it was the philosophy that drove a lot of people to do what they do and particularly found this country, for example. You're saying that our philosophy at the moment is leading us along the path of pre-Nazi Germany? Well, not the public. I think the public is still sympathetic to the ideas of the Founding Fathers. That's the hope for the future. But the intellectuals are disseminating in the colleges and universities, as I know from years of experience, the very same ideas which ripened the Germans for Hitler. Okay, before we get into that, the intellectuals, that's, yeah. a, that's a terrific... Generalization professors is like calling people of, egheads and professors so Professors of humanities and liberal arts, social sciences at our leading colleges and universities. But professors they cover of philosophy, economics, etc. They cover a tremendous range of thought. No, they do not, sir. I have to disagree with you. They okay. cover allegedly a tremendous range of thought, but there are two essentials that run in various forms through the dominant establishment viewpoint, which are the two essentials that prepared the Germans for Hitler. Okay, what are what? In a word apiece, I have a chapter each on them in the book. Unreason and self-sacrifice. By unreason, I mean the rejection of logic, the idea that you should go instead by instinct, intuition, revelation, emotion. If so, of course, you're ripe for a dictator to stir up an emotional frenzy. You've thrown away your weapon of challenging and answering. Him. Okay, can you, give one us, point. can you give us an example of, uh, yeah, sure. of a... Of a a university that for producing that yeah. as an example, absolutely. You take the typical college undergraduate, comes out, he's had four years in which he's been battered with the idea. There are no absolutes, nothing is certain but death and taxes. What's true for you isn't true for me. Who can know anything? He has lost confidence in his own mind and judgment. He doesn't know where he's going. He doesn't believe he can figure out any answers. And so, a lot of them give up ideas. A lot of them become authoritarian and just obey society. Some of them jump into another ominous parallel, the mystic cults, the Hare Krishnas, the Moonies, and so on, which are very parallel to Germany in the 20s. But they don't attract. And, and they follow a guru, a guru who tells them what to do. Okay, but they, they're sensational. But I think it's encouraging to know that they don't attract you know, the vast majority of the people. No, who they certainly there. don't, but I think it's an ominous sign that they attract more and more and as many as they do. That's just one example. There are many others. There's a much wider example of the despair of the younger generation in drug addiction, which also had a parallel to Germany in the 20s. It was absolutely not true when I was growing up. There are all sorts of parallels well, indicating was... this anti-reason attitude inculcated into people. Okay. The other parallel you were talking about. The, the other, other, the other, the other central screen. idea is the concept of self-sacrifice. The idea that the justification of your life is service to others. That you are nothing, you're just a pawn of the community and you should live to serve it. If so, you're right for the dictator to come and say, I'm the voice of society and here's what you have to do. That's what they did to the Germans and that is what the colleges are pumping into these kids. And yet, well, I don't, okay, I'm going to disagree with you there because I, I, having gone to college not yeah. too long ago myself, one of the things that we were talked about was we were taught was the integrity of your own mind and thought and that was why what was true for you might not be true for someone else that you could think for yourself that academic freedom was very important and that your ideas mattered well if you were taught that that's good it depends how it was defined academic freedom is of course a big thing the colleges demand but it's a it's a hypocrisy because they claim that they represent all different views but they don't they have a party line so they tell you, think for yourself, but you have a choice of variations of the same thing. You should sacrifice yourself for the, for the nation. You should sacrifice yourself for the poor. You should sacrifice yourself for the minorities. You should sacrifice yourself for humanity. There's all many different schools, but the common denominator is you should sacrifice yourself, for instance. All right, but the idea is that if we are a society of individuals, yes. okay, that what will eventually... Uh, we, uh, let me back up a minute. If you're, you're not exactly sacrificing yourself for someone, but I think that the reason that we work for improvement in, say, a lot of the poor or the minorities or anybody else is that eventually it'll help all of us. Well, I believe that the way to improve anybody's condition is to have a free country. That's what this country was founded on. The idea of individual rights 
capitalism, laissez-faire capitalism, get the government out of the economy, mm -hmm. leave the productive man free, and that will produce the highest standard of living. Do you think but the government... Is, I do not believe in welfare legislation. I don't believe in government handouts to any group, whether businessmen, the poor, the minorities, or you name it. Do you think the government... Big government is the greatest obvious similarity to, uh, to what was happening in Germany. The constant growth of government, whichever party gets in, mm -hmm. Republican or Democrat, liberal or conservative. Do you think that the government got involved in, say, the business world or in, in other aspects of our lives because of failings or because of problems that we were having that, that no one else could solve? Or no, did sir. it get in on its own initiative? It got in because of philosophy. The so-called problems that capitalism caused in the 19th century were not caused by capitalism, but by government intervention in the economy. The pattern is first government intervenes and causes a problem, and then it demands more government to solve the problem, that, and so on and so forth. And example. the root of it, well, for instance, monopolies. Monopolies are made possible by government intervention, by government franchises, which prohibit competition, by government subsidies, which make it impossible to compete, by massive taxes, which make it impossible for people to accumulate capital to compete. First, the government then creates monopolies, and then it says we have to have an antitrust commission in order to prevent monopolies. This is typical of 15 different evils alleged against capitalism, and the solution is to get the government out. But the problem is, all our allegedly warring groups want more government. It's obvious that the liberals want more economic controls and so on. But President Reagan and the Moral Majority Committee, and they say this is wrong, they're anti-liberal, and they have a whole constellation of moral and intellectual controls to be legislated by the federal government, which they want, you know, from the prohibition of abortion, government censorship of literature for so-called obscenity, government telling us how biology should be taught, etc., etc., prayer in the schools to be legislated. One side says the solution to our problems is more government. The other side says this is wrong. The solution is more government. Hitler had the same groups in Germany, and he said, you're both right. Let's have total government. All right. Now, that's a very, that's a general view. Okay. But uh, you have to remember, first of all, that the philosophies, even if, even if I grant for a moment that what you're saying is, is okay, okay, the ground, the training ground for all of this, America, is a whole lot different. And the people are different. Absolutely. Our traditions oh, are different wonderful. from yeah. Nazi Germany. I'm not sure that now the remember, parallels can be drawn that closely. From Nazi Germany. This is okay, the greatest country Germany. in history. Yeah. If Germany. it was up to the people in this country, I would have no worries at all. Not any, because they still up uphold the heritage of the Founding Fathers. Basically, they're pro-common sense, which is a form of reason. They're pro the pursuit of their own happiness, and they're against big government. But the problem is, I do not think the people of any country determine the future. The future is determined by ideas, which means by the universities and the intellectuals, and the people are given no choice. But this, all the politicians and all the professors, basically the influential ones, agree. So no matter how much the pe people haven't approved of the trend for the last 40 years, they can't do anything but they haven't. The, the politicians and the professors and so forth have not really... If you look at, at for instance, the 1972 election, yeah. George McGovern. Right. All right the, the idea, the popular idea then was that he was the prairie populist and so forth. Yet, it was the the professors, the intellectuals, and, and all that, or a lot of them, who backed George McGovern. He went down to a tremendous sure, defeat, the one of the worst in history. very against the new left, so they got Richard Nixon, who did absolutely nothing whatever to counter the trend and made a shambles and a disgrace of the alternative, and introduced the first to wage and price controls in peacetime. So when they turn for, to somebody else, they get exactly the same thing okay, over Okay, how them. would you keep, very quickly, we're running out of time here, how would you keep the government off the back of somebody? Who's going to do I, that? I would, I would, first of all, you have to change the philosophy. You have to have one out of a hundred professors preaching reason and capitalism. That's what I would say. If the universities would allow for every hundred advocates of unreason and socialism, one to take a pro-American viewpoint, I wouldn't worry. Well, America is defined by, you know, it, your definition of America might be different from... Well, I have else. a chapter in the ominous parallel saying what I think this country was founded on and documented from Jefferson and Madison and so on. And it's basically what I've been saying, reason and selfishness, the pursuit of your own happiness and therefore a free country. But that is not taught, that is vilified at our universities. Ominous Parallels is the name of the book, and obviously there's a lot more to it than we've been able to cover. Leonard Peikoff is the man who has written it. Dr. Peikoff, this has been fun. We're going to have to come back and cross swords again. I enjoyed okay, it. Okay, thanks a lot. 10, 12, 128.